this is what the mark of a genius is. Am I calling myself a genius? Maybe. The mark of a genius is to be able to see how things connect. Have you ever heard this? I've heard this before. A genius can see how things c connect. People who are maybe not geniuses, they're always looking for, they're always looking for how things don't connect. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I'm an apprentice digital marketer at my town's food bank. This is my current career and the apprenticeship lasts until March of next year. So you got a year. It's not something I'm very passionate about and is just a source of money for me. However, I know I'm gaining valuable experience and I also enjoy helping those in need. So it's not all pain. <laughs> I have other things I'm passionate about that call to my soul, music and martial arts, but in order to fully commit to being the best I can be at my job, um, these passions will have to take a back seat. Do you have any advice? Uh, good. So first of all, it seems like you have the right attitude about it. You do what you have to do, whether you feel like it or not. It's a good opportunity. Um, Rob, the guy that wrote uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, Japanese guy, Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, in his book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or at least in one of his videos or something that I may have watched, he says every job is like a university degree. Every job that you get is a learning experience. And, I, and it rec it's cool that you recognize that. When you get a job, the money is secondary. I know that sounds crazy because you need the money and it's good to get the money. But think of it always in terms of what kind of experience am I gonna gain from this? And if it's not so obvious right away, it's up to you to look around for learning opportunities. Um, and of course, you're doing good work. You're working at the food bank. Now, you are in a pro Another good book that you should read is Mastery by Robert Greene. And when you read Mastery by Robert Greene as a young man, you start to recognize that no experience you have is useless. And in fact, it's interesting when you read the book and you come to understand that if you ever want to be a creative master, you have to have a myriad of experiences that you could ultimately pull out as a palette that will color the masterpiece that you create. So if you think about a painter, right? He's got this palette, right? You ever see the painters? They put their finger in that thing and it's like, and they could take the, they could take the different colors and then they can mix them together. You think about that? They take the colors and they mix them together. They make a new color and they turn something. Go watch Bob Ross. The, for you in your life, because your life is a masterpiece, your life is a painting, your life is art, a piece of artwork. It's a work of art. That palette is covered with all your various experiences, all the different jobs and internships, all the different little weird micro studies you did, right? Like let's say you became fascinated in a particular subject and you spent like a month watching YouTube videos on it. Any of these little areas that you ultimately go down even though them in and of themselves are not going to create a masterpiece, right? You ain't going to take one color and create a freaking masterpiece with it. All of them offer an opportunity to be blended to create something new. I can blend these two things together. Like, so for example, um, when I started, I just got to use examples that you guys are familiar with in terms of my life, uh, started making that YouTube channel, the Strength Camp YouTube channel. I blended, if you notice, what made me, one of the reasons that made me popular was that I blended strongman, right? Which is, is my athletic background and being a brute with all of the corrective exercise and, and physiology that I learned studying with Paul Check. Then I started really learning about bioenergetics and I under, started understanding psychology. I started like taking all these different micro uh, areas of study and experience and seeing this is what the mark of a genius is. Am I calling myself a genius? Maybe. The mark of a genius is to be able to see how things connect. Have you ever heard this? I've heard this before. A genius can see how things c connect. People who are maybe not geniuses, they're always looking for, they're always looking for how things don't connect. They're always looking for, you know, and this is a good way to think also because it creates a boundary in your life. But at the same time, of course, balance. You want to be able to see how things actually connect. And when you look back in your life, you're going to see how all these weird things connect. All these weird things connect. Right? Even, even the bad experiences, even the things that like you look, 
you you might while you're going through it say to yourself oh that sucks this sucks i don't want to do this but guaranteed if you have the right state of mind you'll go back years from now and you'll say oh now i see why i had to do that now i understand why god put me through that training camp right that figurative training camp of getting my ass whooped those hard times uh people who who stay losers their whole life they get caught in a hard time and then they identify it they identify themselves with that hard time either by being depressed and then they identify with their depression and they got to go to the doctor and then they got to get pills and then they they call it my depression um and they get stuck in that and then it just is a downward spiral those are people who are just knocked off course and that's it for the rest of their life but resilient people they go through that pain they go through those struggles they go through those times doing things maybe that they didn't want to do like you right now working at the food bank but they never personally identify with it so that one once once the the light at the end of the tunnel starts to present itself they can always look back and say huh them good old days they were tough they were hard there were some good old days because they brought me to where I am right now. So it was all perspective. And as a young man, when I say a young man, I mean anybody under the age of 32, right? 30, right? Like it's, you're still a young man. You're not a child. You're not a teenager. You're not a big boy. You're a man, a young man. I like that term. That's a term that needs to make a comeback. Young man. Not a dude, not a guy. You're a young man. Anyway, so uh, I forgot where I was going with that. You, in your situation, though, oh, here is what I was going to say. Um, don't be, when you're a young man, don't be in a rush to have to have it all figured out. Don't be in a rush to get there. When I say get there, you have a vision for what you want in your life. Just like that seed that's planted, that oak tree seed that's planted, the vision for the oak tree is in that seed. And that acorn is planted where? D down in the dark. Nobody knows what the hell's going on. Down in the dark. And what does it have? Dirt and water, right? So that's the internal process of what's going on to ultimately create a mighty oak tree. When you're a young man, you're still like a sapling, right? You're still like a sapling. The potential for the oh, mighty oak is there, but you have to honor the sapling, if it's ever going to be an oak tree. If you're if you're an arborist and you look at the and you look at the uh, sapling and you say to yourself, "This old miserable sapling, pfft, it's not even an oak tree yet. How quickly can we make this the oak tree, right?" Or another example is if if you bury the seed and you're waiting for the for the seedling to come out and you're like, "I just can't wait," and you start digging down and it's like, "See where what's going on? You're fucking up the process. You're messing up the process." So you're in a process. When you're a young man, you're in a process. You're in a apprenticeship. This is what Robert Greene calls it. You're in an apprenticeship. And you're gathering experiences, you're blending things, and you're making your way so that ultimately you'll find your vein of mastery. And sometimes in this world is not so easy. It used to be very easy when you to find a vein of mastery back in, you know, in the days when it was, I was re, I was listening to a YouTube video about uh, the Gilded Age, you know, the, the high middle ages and how a young man would, you know, he would be an apprentice for shoe making or sword making or tool making. And, you know, so he already knew where he was going with things. It's not so simple for us right now. But when you do tap into that one thing that starts to show some momentum, then you just put all your eggs in that basket and watch that basket grow, grow. But you're not there yet. I wasn't there. I was. I didn't feel I was there. I didn't sense I was really there. <sighs> it took me a long time, well into my thirties. Y'all probably knew me already, and I was still a little confused about what am I? Exa what exactly am I doing right now? I would say that I only really started hitting my stride, maybe the past two, three years. Two years, right? So that's, that's just to give you some hope that if you're in your early 20s, look at old E, old Uncle E, 42. And I'm just, I, I really do feel like I'm just starting to figure it out. Like I'm starting to look back even at the things that maybe you saw in my life and said, oh, Elliot made it, but I didn't make it. When I was making those YouTube videos, it was like you being an apprentice with the digital marketing. I was just an apprentice on YouTube. I'm practicing that shit. 
I was, I was, I, I had some success in my practice, but I was still practicing. I was, still, yo, Elliot was just practice for what's coming up right now. Strength camp was just practice for the strength camp ranch that's coming up right now. You see all these things? It's all practice. It's all practice. And it just gets better and it gets better and it gets better. Now, let me address your situation, your specific situation a little bit. Because I understand that you're passionate about music and martial arts, right? By the way, I just this popped into my head. You know what's a blend of music and martial arts? Capoeira. You ever see Capoeira? I did I took some Capoeira classes when I was a youth. You know, I was like 22, 23. Capoeira is pretty dope. It's a martial arts, but then you learn how to play the drum. And like they play the drum, they play the music, and a guy do like the martial arts. Pretty cool shit. It's like music. It's like dancing, but martial arts. Pretty cool shit. And so that's already blended, you know. Music and martial arts can absolutely be blended. But I'm not even going to go there with that because I don't know what that's going gonna to be for you. But what I do know is that if you continue to develop your skills and be 100% focused on, dedicated to, have devotion towards building your digital marketing understanding, even if it's a food bank. One of the things that Dan Kennedy says is that with um, non-for-profits, these people that own non-for-profits don't realize that they got to run their marketing just like a for-profit. And so for a food bank, a lot of your marketing is going to go towards the people that you need. It's always about an exchange, but you're giving shit out for free at a food bank. So you, you might be learning this, but I'm just kind of like, calculating what's going on in your life right now so I can better understand as a digital marketer for a food bank my assumption is that it's a non-for-profit right because people the people that are getting food at the food bank ain't paying for it so it's like what do you need digital marketing for ah but you need marketing for the people that are going to invest who are going to the people who are going to bring food for the food bank people are going to uh donate money to the food bank that's the the greatest uh bang for your buck in a non-for-profit learning digital marketing is how to get people to give me money. And what does that sound like? It sounds like legit digital marketing. It sounds like business for-profit digital marketing. A non-for-profit is a for-profit, except they're getting their profits from donations and well, both monetary donations and food bank donations. So you're going to, you, even if, I don't know if the people that are teaching you know this, but you could even start developing your understanding of this. The better you become as a, as a digital marketer, even in a food bank, the more of a solid foundation for reaching customers when you become a musician or martial artist. As a musician, or let's, let's look at musicians here for a moment. As a musician, musicians are artists, right? And artists have this weird hang up. They think they they think there's something uh, virtuous about the bohemian lifestyle. Starving artists. I just focus on my art, right? And they just wish somebody would come and buy their shit. That's not that's not being a good artist. Even if you look at like the the musicians and like the, like the rap. Think about I think about like guys like Fifty Cent or like uh, Dr. Dre. These guys. They made their art, but then they became businessmen. Jay-Z, they became businessmen. Because the music, the art, needs to be profitable. Everything in this world is measured by exchange. If nobody's willing to exchange money, time, effort, energy, likes, subscribes, whatever, if they, if they were not willing to give you something for what you're putting out then you're not you're not doing anything you're just it's a hobby and if that's the way you want to live you want to live like a a, a a more bohemian well that's fine but uh in my opinion you're going to take everything that you learn with digital marketing at this food bank and you'll be able to turn around and it's going to help you have the right mindset for marketing your music if you make your music for your martial arts course whatever it is that you're going to do to help bring your gift you say your passion to the world you got to understand marketing there's no question about it so that's it that's all that's my thought one last thing i'll put out there is um never scorn 
your current situation. Never scorn the job that you have, even though you know it's not your final job. A lot of guys do that and they get into this and it gets them caught in a rut where they just spiral downwards and they never get to where they want because they don't appreciate what they have. Appreciate what you have with all your heart. Say thank you to God every day for putting you right where you need to be right now for the unfolding of the life that he has planned for you. You're exactly where you need to be. The problem is with a lot of people is they're so busy looking for the next thing. They're so busy looking forward. They're so busy daydreaming that they don't, they don't squeeze the juice out of what, they're, what they have right now. You gotta get, get the most out of what you have right now and it has everything to do with attitude. Have a good attitude about it. Even though you're not gonna be there forever, have a good attitude about it. And you'll be all right. You're gonna do real well. I see amazing things unfolding for you there, brother. So I hope that helps, man. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.